welcome to our talk studio. We're very happy to have in studio, excuse me for that, uh, happy to have in studio Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture, Fisheries and Livestock, Felix Koske is with us. Thank you for joining us in studio. A huge docket, all important docket for this country looking at food security issues and so much more. But let's start with our ambitious project. We've got the one million uh, acre irrigation project for the country. And just looking at some of the numbers, it's gonna cost 250 billion shillings, which, which is massive. But we're looking at doubling uh, production capacity from about 20 uh, million bags of maize to 40, 45. But the question I'll ask you is, paint the picture for us. We hear the numbers, but what people want to know is, how will this transform Kenya? Thank you, Julie. Um, first of all, I would like to explain to Kenyans the mandate of my ministry. And uh, my ministry is in charge of agriculture, livestock, and fisheries, and basically food security for the country. And uh, what do we mean by food security? Food must be available, enough food. And secondly, it must be accessible. Mm -hmm. And the third thing, it must be affordable. If you combine those three, then people will have food all the time. And um, why Galana Irrigation Scheme? Why one million acres? It is because of the following reasons. One is that we've been depending on rain-fed agriculture for many years, for the last 50 years, and it has failed us miserably. And therefore, the population is growing. Land is finite. Worst of all, the land subdivision is going on in various parts of the country. Cost of production is going up every day. Uh, issues of mechanization is a problem. And uh, the government decided. And this came from His Excellency the President's uh, promise to Kenyans that um, uh, if elected, and within five years, one million acres will be irrigated. What does this mean for Kenya? Paint that picture for us. Galana irrigation scheme will be a game changer in this country. One is that we shall double the production of maize. From the current 41, 42 million bags, we shall add another 45 to 50 million bags. What will it, what does it mean? One is that since we are going to employ the latest technology available, it is under irrigation, we shall have again to, to ha we will have two seasons of production. It means that the cost of production will be down. And therefore, it translates to cheaper um, food mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Two questions for you bef before you go on. Yes. You, you've spoken of technology. Th people will definitely think then of mechanization, for instance. So what's the impact of this project, say, on employment um, and, and opportunities for people in Kenya. You know, how much would mechanization then affect the ability to employ people? But also, let's, let's talk about the smallholder farmer and how to protect the smallholder farmer even as we go into large-scale farming. Yeah, f first of all, I, I, I would like to, to respond uh, on the first question on mechanization. Mm -hmm. We want to use the latest technology. We want to mechanize. Why? It's because we want to reduce to reduce the cost of production so that the consumer will access this food cheaply. That's the main thing. Number two, when it comes to employment, our conservative figures indicate that we will employ a minimum of two million people. We've said if it is highly mechanized, then let us put two people by acre. You can't miss uh, human intervention. A in minimum any. of two million jobs. A minimum of two million direct jobs. But indirectly, you can imagine, you can multiply by five. So, on one side, we want to ensure that each and every Kenyan can afford food. We don't want anybody else to sleep hungry in this country anymore. The, s the question of smallholder farmers and, and people who are sitting wondering, and we know the struggle, the cost of fertilizer, cost of inputs, um, and many other challenges that the small farmer is dealing with. And yet so many people in this country, their livelihood comes from the little plot of land that they're working on. So how do we protect, and in fact, how do we grow the capacity of small farmers even as we engage in, in this huge uh, project? Yeah, the government is very clear. My ministry I I is very clear on this. And and uh, small, 
scale, farmers will not lose out. Why? It's because government for the first four years have been even subsidizing for fertilizer. And currently, we have moved very fast to ensure that fertilizer arrives in time. Number two, government now is working hard to ensure that we have farm machinery, of which, yes, if you can remember, last year I went to Brazil and we negotiated and the, the tractors and other machinery will be coming. These are to serve small-scale farmers. Mm -hmm. Number three, again, when you talk about small-scale farmers, we are focusing on them in terms of uh, post-harvest storage facilities. We are, we are installing dryers. We are, at the same time, ensuring that their produce are bought by National Cereals and Produce Board. Mm -hmm. But Galana project will produce food that will go straight to the shelves. Because what we are saying is that it is a complete value chain concept where the production has to be done, processing has to be done, packaging has to be done, and taken straight to the, to the shelf. Meaning that now the small scale holders will still be handled by government in as far as buying of strategic grain reserve is concerned. We'll come back to National Cereals and Produce Board in just a few moments. But it's a lot of excitement around the issue of two million jobs. It's a huge number. Give us the timelines for this project. What do we expect to see happening when? Yeah, uh, as it is now, uh, as you are aware, uh, two days ago, His Excellency the President uh, launched the, 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 the model farm and the consultant services. Uh, the consultant will finalize his feasibility design and give us a report by end of March. And thereafter, we will uh, um, advertise for a contractor, which we expect him to come on board around May, May, June, where now the real irrigation infrastructure construction will start. What we are going to do is to have a multiple, we'll, we'll break them into several uh, projects, or what I can say, um, works, so that we can ha have as many contractors as possible. Phases. So, mm -hmm. Phases, yeah, so that w we move almost at the same time. And uh, what, what we are looking at is a situation where we can do 200,000 acres in the beginning for the first two years. Then, as you are aware, when you are starting, it's difficult. But as you move forward now, we shall move faster and ensure at least by the fifth year, we are done with one million acres. With a full one million. Yes. L let's go to National Cereals and Produce Board and, and a lot of issues and concerns around this institution. Um, you know, let's start with the fact that um, there's a breakdown of a machine, I think, right now, a, a critical machine, and farmers are wondering what next. We know there are issues around uh, auctioneers and freezing of assets. Aside from that, the management of strategic reserves, management of stores has not been, you know, optimum. Uh, what's the way forward for NCPB? NCPB, as you are aware, has been under great problem, mm. which, which started many years ago, from 2003 to date. It has been indebted, it, uh, it had a lot of problems. As you can remember, in 2003, we had, uh, there was uh, famine in the area, and uh, maize were imported, and, and, and uh, uh, people went out there. One of the uh, importers failed to supply, and you know the case in court. And from there, sometimes last year, their accounts were frozen. They, they did not have any money, they could not move forward, they were only surviving. And that is why they, they were not able to service their machines in time. But... Uh, is, is Bonacias, when you look at that under your docket, is it even acceptable? Is this not an emergency situation where you say an institution of this importance can simply not be in this state, and then what are the next steps? It, it, is, it is not acceptable, Julie. Mm. And um, it is not that there was a big problem, because we had foreseen it, and we had instructed the contractor to, to go and start repairs. And we advised farmers to, go to, to, be, to take their produce to the nearest uh, depots, and that was happening. It is only one day when uh, serious board did not get their supplies of fuel, industrial fuel. And it was not cereals board. The problem was with Kenya Pipeline in Eldoret that they did not have at that time. And But finally they got it and things are okay. 
Okay, but, but, but it's a recognition that institutions like this really cannot afford to let down the farmer, that in a country with food insecurity, even one day is a day too much. <laughs> it is a day too yeah, much. It, it is, and at the same time, mm -hmm. we need also to learn as Kenyans to, to, to be consistent and at the yes. same time to, to, to not wait until the last minute. These problems came about because people now are rushing to sell their maize to take their children to school. But we were, we were open since November. So even farmers, you're saying, are waiting till the last minute. The last minute, and the they problem. crowd the same day, and it, it messes up everybody. <laughs> farmers can SMS us, <laughs> 22422. <laughs> what do you think about that? Let's just move on, because still so much talk about this. A huge problem in terms of, of, of you know, wastage, for instance, be between the, 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 the farm and, and the store. Uh, the shelf you're looking at in some cases 40 percent wastage now my concern and, and and what a lot of people are wondering is at the end of the day where does the buck stop when it comes to access to markets it comes to infrastructure and you i think have dealt with infrastructure quite a bit in yeah. your career um, we know the roads have been a problem for farmers but but when you look at for interest since the mira trade we find mira producers ensure their product reaches market, the wastage is minimal. So how can private sector and government work together to address issues like this? Yeah, Julie, um, it is really unacceptable for, for us to farm and then it goes to waste. Mm -hmm. it, it is unacceptable where you find people in other parts of our country dying and yet other side, the other side of the country is also uh, wasting food. Spilling milk, Spilling rotting milk, potatoes. Rotting, yeah. mm -hmm. And um, the, the government has put measures in place. And uh, as I said earlier, we have been installing dryers in respective places. We've been constructing storage facilities. But at the same time, farmers must also construct their own stores. And uh, we are aware that uh, extension officers have not been working very well to advise mm -hmm. these farmers on what to do. But now that, Why is that? agriculture has been devolved, because of supervision, there was a big problem. Mm -hmm. But because of this devolution, we are seeing agriculture is going even to operate better. Why is because now the supervision is closer and extension officers are working and farmers are being rich now and advise the advices that they are supposed to be getting are now getting. Those days they were not. They, they, they was, there was breakdown of management of, of, of extension services. And um, we need to train farmers. We are coming up with curriculum on how to take them to ATCs, to train them on how to store their food, when, when to plant. Uh, what kind of uh, chemicals they need to apply so that uh, they, they don't rot in heavily and uh, how they, they, they need to keep them. And, and, and this is what is happening. Training uh, also required on, on business savvy, pricing of products and, 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 and the rest of it. A lot of farmers we have found at Royal Media Services, we've dealt with a lot of people on the ground, mm -hmm. locked into a cycle of poverty because of lack of, of knowledge um, around basic issues such as accounting. Um, Final question for you, Buona CS. A lot of big projects have simply failed in this country. And so tell Kenyans, this is now your message to Kenya. We've raised money for people starving in the Horn of Africa and people have asked, where is our government? We've seen the, the dire situations in many parts of the country when it comes to access to food. You're saying your mandate is availability, access and affordability. What is your commitment to this country and at what point will we be food secure? Yeah, if projects have been failing, this is not, this is not one of them. This project must succeed. Why? It's because, number one, the kind of um, revenue that we are going to generate from that project is tremendous. Maize alone will give us about 150 billion shillings. Sugar cane, 200,000 acres, will give us 100 billion shillings. How can we allow it to, 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 to stall? We have a different concept this time around. We are bringing in private sector. Government is only going to invest in infrastructure. That is primary and secondary uh, piping system and, and dams. We are inviting private sector to invest in it. And out of 250 billion shillings, government will spend 
between 120 to 130 billion, while the difference will be, be done by the private sector. I don't think any investor will accept this project to fail because this is where they will get the money. And at the end of it all, our people will get food. So I am sure in Kenyans that let them watch this space. The project has to come into fruition. Watch this space, says Cabinet Secretary Felix Kosgain. Of course, food is big business, not just in Kenya or Africa, but globally. So what potential do we have and what can we achieve with one million acres? Um, share your views with us, double two, four, double two. And we move on with Sunday Live now. Uh, thank you so much, Buonasias, for joining us. Now, uh, 